Hi again and welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk to you about understanding and knowing who your audience is when you want to communicate with them. See, depending on my audience, I need to change the way that I speak. If I'm talking to a bunch of teenagers, the words I use, the way I speak, the examples I give has to change as against if I'm talking to a group of senior leaders. What they want, the examples that they would relate to is definitely different. So we need to know who our audience is. So let's discuss how do we know who our audience is, how can we figure out who our audience is, uh, how can we give our audience what they want, uh, what do we want from our audience, and finally, by the end of your communication, by the end of your talk, your speech, your presentation, what do you want your audience to do? So let's start trying to figure out who is our audience. So a very, very import, important question to ask is WIIFM. What's in it for me? That's not what's in it for me, Sanjeev, who's speaking to you, or what's in it for you, who are speaking to your audience, but it's from the audience's perspective. What's in it for me means what's in it for the audience. Each individual in the audience is always thinking, why should I listen to you? Now you are watching this video and are thinking, why should I listen to Sanjeev? So I need to know what is the value I'm going to give you. I need to know what are you looking for? What's in it for you? So when I say what's in it for me, it means what's in it for you from your perspective. Because each of you are thinking, what's in it for me? So we know we need to always think, it's not about me as the communicator. If I'm doing this video, it's not about me at all. It's about you. What is the value I can give you? What are you searching for? How can I help you? What do you want? And that's really important. So try to figure out what is your audience looking for? Because they're always thinking, what's in it for me? And if you can answer that question, they're going to be with us. Yeah? Because after listening for a couple of minutes, if they figure out, no, I'm not getting from value, I'm not getting any value from this video. So what's in it for me? Nothing. Let's leave. <laughs> so we have to give them value, isn't it? We have to give them value. What are the audience's expectations connected to what's it, what's in it for me? What are they looking for? What do they want? How can we help them? So it's all connected. What's in it for me? How much of knowledge does your audience have about this subject? So if you're talking to an expert on the subject, we don't need to give that expert a lot of background information. We might need to just say, how is our product or service different to what else is in the market? But if you're talking to a novice in the area, we might have to explain what this technology is about, uh, what this technology is about. How does it work? Yeah, give them some more information about background, about the foundation, because otherwise they may not understand. So we need to know what kind of knowledge our audience has about the topic that we are speaking about. So that's also very important. What knowledge does your audience have about the topic that you're speaking on? So how can I pitch? Uh, there was a time when I was actually doing uh, uh, teaching at an MBA class, Master of Business Administration for one of the top universities in, in Colombo. And I had a tough, tough job. So I was actually teaching an IT subject. In this class, we had about 100 students. There were some who were IT professionals, right? Obviously, whatever I was teaching, teaching them, most of what I was teaching, they knew, right? Because this was uh, an IT subject related to management, but some technical aspects as well. Of course, in that class were also HR professionals, uh, finance professionals, uh, marketing and sales professionals who knew very little about IT and uh, very little about technology. So where do I pitch? <laughs> that became extremely difficult. If I pitched so that the IT guys actually got some value from what I was telling, most of the marketing sales HR guys would be totally lost. They wouldn't understand a word of what I'm saying. And then if I brought it down, I simplified it so that the HR guys would understand, the IT guys would feel bored saying, I already know this. So it became actually quite tough because the knowledge of the people in the audience was quite, quite different. This doesn't always happen, but yeah, sometimes it happens as well. So knowing the knowledge becomes extremely important. If it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that's far easier to figure out because it's just one person. Even if it's a group of sales professionals, that's fine. Even if it's 100 sales professionals, that's fine because their knowledge would be more or less uh, the same. So knowing the knowledge of your audience becomes important. 
How does your audience view you? What is the attitude towards you? Do they have a positive attitude towards you? In that case, they're more likely to listen to your message, more likely to want to gain something, more likely to want to learn. If they have a negative attitude towards you, well, they're already thinking, ah, I don't think Sanjeev can give me some value. You know, I listened to the last video. I didn't really get too much from this. Why should I listen to this? I already am starting with a negative attitude about Sanjeev. Then that's not going to really uh, help. It's not, it's going to be very difficult to get across to the audience. But good to know. Now, if I've already spoken to a client and the last time I spoke to him, he was disappointed with my product or my service. Now I have to go in, I'm going to speak to him again. So what's the background here? He's already disappointed in me. What's the attitude he has towards me? It's a negative attitude. So I need to start knowing that and trying to figure out, okay, he's already started with a negative attitude. How do I change this? How do I turn it around? How do I change his perception from negative to positive? And one way I can do that is I can figure out, okay, what happened in the past? Why was he upset? What did I do? What did I not do? How did I let him down? What happened with the product or service? Maybe it was not my fault at all. Maybe it was just perception, but I need to know that. And when I go for this next conversation, I need to start there and say, you know, Mr. Fernando, I'm extremely sorry about what happened. I know you're upset about this. We have solved the problem or we will give you a definitely a better service or we will give you a price reduction on this. Yeah, to make up for your uh, being upset with us in the past and try to turn that around. Try to turn that around. Sometimes ignoring the fact that he is upset with us, he has a negative attitude, is not going to help at all. Sometimes, actually lots of times, if we have messed up, our client just wants us to say, I'm sorry. Just wants us to say, sorry, I messed up. And acknowledge the fact that we have made a mistake. Lots of times people don't acknowledge the fact that they have made a mistake. And that makes it even more annoying. Isn't it the same with you? It's the same with every human being, isn't it? If someone made a mistake, we want them to acknowledge it. We want them to say how they are going to make uh, amends for it, uh, how they are going to help us get over some problem. And then we can build the relationship again. So we need to start by acknowledging the problem, acknowledging what happened, maybe apologizing for it. It doesn't hurt to ap apologize and say, you know, Mr. Fernando, I'm really sorry for how you are feeling about this. I'm not accepting that there was, a, there was a problem or there was a mistake on my part, if there was not. Let's say the mistake was totally on Mr. Fernando, the client's side, but I can still apologize for his state of mind. I can apologize and say, I'm really sorry that you're feeling this way. It shows empathy. It shows that we are with you. It shows that we understand you. And that becomes very important. When we're thinking of our audience, we also need to think, as we said, about the knowledge that they have or they don't have. And therefore, what questions are they going to ask from us? Some of those questions they will actually ask. They will speak to us and ask. Other questions they may not ask, but they will have it in their mind. So if we can figure out what questions my audience will have, I can actually answer those questions even before they ask it. And sometimes, if I'm prepared with all the possible questions they can ask and all the possible answers I can give them, no matter what questions they ask, I'm prepared. There was a, there was a person that I was coaching in a leadership development program who had to, you know, once a week travel about 100 kilometers to the head office of this organization to have a discussion with the managing director, uh, the CEO of this organization. And what he would do was uh, earlier, before we actually had a chance to uh, help him, before I had a chance to coach him, uh, he, would, he would tell me that, you know, he comes for this conversation with the CEO and the CEO asks him so many questions and he doesn't have answers for most of them. And then the CEO says, you know, come on, I, I, I'm calling you for the discussion once a week. I expect you to have these answers. And this guy says, you know, but I, I didn't know you were going to ask me this question. And then the CEO says, no, but in your position, you, you should know this. What I told him, what I advised him was, you know, always try to make a list what are the possible questions the CEO can ask you? Because he's only going to ask you about your area, about your product, about your, your subject matter domain. Right? So what he did after that was he has to travel 100 kilometers to see the CEO. While traveling, he would make a mental note of all the possible questions the CEO would ask and he would have his mental answers already. So now what happens? CEO asks the question. He has his answer ready. Everyone is happy. Now the CEO has a perception of, wow, this guy is so prepared. He's so smart. I should promote him. Great. 
know your audience and be prepared with what are the questions your audience might ask you. We have to be also clear what do we want from our audience. So two things. Do we want our audience to understand what we are saying? So it's just informational. I'm just telling you something. All I want you to do is understand what I'm saying. Right? Take it in. I don't want you to even agree with me. I want you to get the message. I want you to understand what I'm saying. So it's informational. So you should know what I've said. So that's just informing. Informing. Right? Maybe I'm just informing people, you know, tomorrow we start work at 7 o'clock in the morning instead of 8. Now I know some people may not like it, but the purpose of this message is not to convince you that you should like this. It's purely to inform you tomorrow we start work at at seven o'clock in the morning so that's purely informational then i just want you to understand the message so that's one way we could also want our audience to think in a different way to believe something different or to do something different so three things we might want our audience to think differently to believe something different than what they do right now so i want to change their belief i want them to do something different to what they are doing right now in that case i need to persuade my audience so the first one was, I just wanted to inform them. I just wanted to make sure they understand. The next three, think, believe, and do, I need to persuade. Because otherwise they're not going to think differently or believe differently or do something that I'm asking them to do. So I need to persuade. I need to persuade my audience. So it's very clear. Uh, it's very important that we are clear what we want from the audience. If I need, if I'm talking to my group of sales professionals, I want them to believe that the target is achievable. I want to, them to think differently. I want them to think of their product in a different way than they were thinking before. Uh, sometimes we think our product is too expensive, but I want them to think not about the expense. I want them to think that this product has great value, much more value than the competitor's product. So think differently. I want them then to believe that it can be sold, that targets can be achieved, that there are customers out there who want the product. I want them to believe something different. And now I want them to go out and sell. So I want them to do something different. Achieve the targets. So think, believe, do. And finally, once you have finished speaking to the audience, what do you want them to remember? As they walk out of the room, as they walk, as they, as they close the, as they end the Zoom call or they end the team's call, and they walk away. What do you want them to walk away with? What do you want them to remember? What's the thought you want them to carry uh, with them? What's the key point? See, audiences are not going to remember more than three key points. We might have 15, but they'll still remember only three, if you're lucky. Lots of times they'll just remember one. So keep reiterating the key points over and over. Not many, one, two, or three maximum. Keep repeating that over and over. So when they walk away, they would at least remember those key points. And the call to action, CTA, call to action, very important. What do you want them to do? I had a great boss some years ago when I was working in the corporate sector. Fantastic guy, really helpful, very kind, uh, very empathetic. He would tell us a lot uh, using storytelling. He would call the whole team into his room and he'll tell us a lovely story. The story would be fantastic, would enjoy the uh, story, but he would omit the call to action. So we listen to the story, love the story, walk out and think, what did my boss want us to do? What did my boss want me to do? Because the call to action was unclear. Lovely story. So no point telling stories if we don't connect that story to the call to action. Finally, we need people, we need our audience, we need our team, we need our colleagues to do something. We need our family, we need our children to do something. So story is great, call to action even more important. Story without a call to action is meaningless. So the story adds weight to the call to action. Remember my stories in some of the other videos that we have watched, right? Stories become uh, really important. And the story about my boss is also a story. <laughs> that's also a story. So that story reiterates the fact that call to action is important. So that story illustrates the story as well, isn't it? And that's fantastic. We need to be clear about what's the key points we want them to remember, what's the call to action or what are we asking them to do. We also need to think, why should they do what you're asking them to do? Do they believe in what you're saying? Do they accept it? Do they own it? Or are you just asking them to do something just using a hierarchical authority? Why should they do what we're asking them to do? 
and the best way to get people to do something we're asking them to do is help them get them to a place where they believe in what we're asking them to do they see the value of it they see the benefit of doing it for themselves they see you know if i do this how is it going to help me how is it going to help my life how is it going to help my career how is it going to help my income then they'll do it because they see a clear benefit how does this uh, what what sanjeev is asking me to do how does this help my client how does it help my company how does it help my country great so make sure they know why you asking them to do what you asking them to do because that's going to be important for them to figure out why should they do what you asking them to do so i think the days are past the time is past where we can just force someone to do what we asking them to do most people won't do it anymore they'll only do it if they believe in it so why should they do what we asking them to do again coming back to what's in it for me w i i f m what's in it for me becomes very important and finally what is the impact if they do what we asking so what's going to happen yes our sales are going to increase yes our customers are going to be happy yes we are going to earn more money yes you get a better incentive yes you get a better bonus yes after some time you get a promotion what will happen if you do what we asking and also sometimes very important what will happen if you don't do what we asking okay so your incentive is going to go down uh, we might not have sales of this product which means we might lo lose our lose our partnership which means we might have to let some of our team go which means you might lose your job <laughs> sometimes it's important to say that as well what will happen if you do what we asking what will happen if you don't so tell the audience as well even if it's one person 10 people 15 people 20 people 100 people what will happen if you do what we asking you to do what will happen if you don't so i think we need to remember those points so we're talking about identifying who our audience is what's in it for them very important what are the expectations what is the knowledge they have about the subject what is the attitude towards you as the speaker is it positive or negative what kind of questions will they ask so we we can be prepared then we 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 discuss that it's very important that we know what we want from our audience do we just want them to understand something which is just informational or do we want them to think believe or do something differently which means we need to persuade them finally what do you want them to remember from your message at least three points or oh, maximum three points i was the call to action what do you want them to do why should they do what you ask and what is the impact if they do what we asking what is the impact if they don't i hope you enjoy this video i hope this is going to help you understand your audience better doesn't take a long time before your next presentation before your next uh, customer meeting just take a few minutes take 5 minutes take 10 minutes and think about um, just jot down what do you know about your audience it will help you to prepare it will help you to get a better impact from the communication that you are going to make i hope you enjoyed this i hope it gave you great value i hope it did and if it did please put some comments in the if you felt that you got some value from this video please add a comment tell me how this will help you tell me how i can serve you more what what more help you want from me what kind of videos you want me to do for you so that i can help you more and if you haven't done it already please do subscribe to this channel if you feel you're getting value stay safe and stay blessed i'll see you at the next video